show. Our special guest for today is the recently crowned Queen of Celebrity Love Island. It's Jane Middlemiss. <laughs> and also joining me, my two confidants, Jan Ravens and Maria McCurlane. <laughs> now, I thought I'd start today off with something that's been niggling me, and it's that feeling, you know, when... Everyone is mad about something and you just don't get it and so you feel a bit like an alien and for me It's the iPod not that I I get the iPod in, in that it's beautiful And I love it as an idea like a consumer idea and I want to play with it But what I don't get is why people want to go around having noise in their ears all the time I just feel I don't get it and I see everyone else has got one I do feel a bit left out, but but also it's the thing of with an iPod you've got to program it if you could just get it with all your Mantovani really tunes on yeah. that you wanted, but you've but got so it's all your tunes, isn't it? You're never going to hear anything that you didn't choose. I mean, if you're listening to the radio or, you're, or generally to sort of life around you, you never know what might happen. Anything could come into your ears. Mm. But if you've got the iPod, it's all pre-programmed. No, because I like the idea of programming, because I, like I like the notion of control, but I just feel it's that thing of never a quiet moment. But I think it's quite dangerous as well. You see people on bikes, sort of mm. like cycling through central London with these things on, and you just think, I can't even be in my car with something in my yeah. ears. That I mean, my music's very loud in my car. Mm. But I just think it's quite dangerous in crossing the street. You don't, you're not aware of your surroundings. So, look, you don't have to be our age to be a fuddy-duddy. I'm <laughs> loving that. <laughs> Maria, what is it that you don't get? Well, this sounds very fuddy-duddy, frankly, because I don't get Sudoku. Sudoku. I don't get it so much so that I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> Sudoku, the, it's a sort of crossword <laughs> thing with numbers and you have to do something in very short space of time with numbers and get to a certain place. I just don't understand it. I now see that Carol Vorderman, who is the face of Sudoku, Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Japanese is that dish. She's the queen yeah. of numbers. She is the queen of numbers, exactly. She so is. she has already brought out three books. And no, oh, you can't in that space of in time. In that space of time. It doesn't take I long. I've been five weeks and she's brought three books out about exactly, Sudoku really. I've never heard of. Well, you, well you've been away you on a love island. Each, each, <laughs> each three lines, don't you? And they all have to add up to. I don't even want to know how to do it because I know I'll be rubbish at it. Yeah. Jan, promise me you're not going to be as these fads nowadays. <laughs> well, actually, no, my, mine's kind of the opposite, really, because um, the thing that I really, I've never got, and everybody always sort of tells me that I should, and you'll all probably pile in and say the same thing, is Frank Sinatra. Why, do, why does everyone think Frank Sinatra is so great? I think he is like, you know, the father of all pub singers. <gasps> I can't bear <laughs> he does all that kind of... <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and that kind of He's really... Meant to, you're meant to say... His phrasing is perfect. No, you see, I aren't can't you? bear his phrasing. Jan, it's a it's good job he's dead because there'd be a contract out I know, on you I now. know, my knee <laughs> <You're> might <laughs> still be. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everyone says, oh, he had such heart and he sang with such feeling. Well, he was a completely heartless person with a completely oh. affected singing style, as far as I can tell. I'm, wow. loving, I'm loving the heat of your argument. Yeah. Now, Frank Sinatra, you get. What don't you get? What's the thing you feel left out? Um, I just have always had a bit of a thing, and I don't know if the girls in the audience will think this, but I, Justin Timberlake. Do not get it. Don't understand why anyone thinks he's sexy. I don't understand why people think he is the best dancer in the world. I don't understand how he's got Cameron Diaz as a girlfriend. I just don't get it. Apparently <laughs> he's very tall. I did meet him. I, I'm quite completely tall, but, um, in disagreement. I think he's got factor X. I think he's got that sexy thing that he just has the to X factor. Is, yes, it? It is it the way he <laughs> dances? <laughs> I just don't, I don't, I, I look at him and I just think, no. He looks like Michael Jackson impersonator when he's dancing, doesn't he? I think, and no, he's I think like, he has got a vaguely cool. nerdy look, I think. He can't, you know, there's no counting for taste. No counting for taste. Exactly. You can't be chatting about that. Now, most people who go on reality TV uh, are people who just want to be in the spotlight or have a camera mm. on them. And you're talented, you've had a successful TV career. So uh, I don't get why you said yes to Celebrity Love Island. I actually said no about four times before I said yes. It was the biggest risk of my career. I mean, I've been doing telly for 10 years. And I mm. think I just sort of got to the point where I thought, um, you know, I wanted to sort of people to see the real me. I think as a, as a TV presenter, you are very controlled by your format. And um, I've always been, you know, I do my job and you get controlled <laughs> by it. control me, mate. And, uh, <laughs> but you see, you know, it, it's, you know it's, it's been 10 years. And so it's that whole thing. And I think I just wanted people to see the real me. Do you think we saw the real you, Jane? Do you think you were able to... Well, I haven't seen it I know we sure. saw you crying quite a lot, uh, which is sweet. I cried a lot, 27 times. And also, I did weeks. bring an invoice in for you for the amount of t money I spent trying to keep you in oh, there. Oh, thank you. you 
cry a lot in real life. So it's the real it's you, real. and yet you cried. Well, I think when you in when you you can't explain this to anyone. When you're in that type of environment. Um, Every single feeling and emotion you have, every single button is being pressed. And because, you know, you've got 12 other people, they are your family, they're your society, they are mm. your everything. But they're also, in some sense, your competition, aren't they? Oh, I well, mean, I never thought like that because... <laughs> so much didn't you really? Life. No, I really... Because <laughs> I, I sort of imagine uh -uh. that there would be this kind of, you know, I want the best camera angle. No, 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 no because you can't. On, you no, know, no, because, that's you see, that's, that's, the, that's the whole thing is, <laughs> when you live that experience, you have to live the... I, I was living the experience. The minute they used to come in and say, right, someone's been evicted, and it became a real yeah, thing, but that's the same of, it was like, yes. oh, we are actually on television. It sounds like <laughs> five weeks of therapy in a way. It was, that's exactly what my best friend said. She said, she kind of came back, she went, you used that as therapy, didn't you? I went, yeah, it was brilliant, I don't have to spend any more money. <laughs> yeah. Jane, tell you therapy, can I ask you something? Yeah. Were you shy was as I a child? Shy? Yes, I was. Because, uh, you know, I think that's quite interesting, because I think shy yes, people, there's two things to say about shy people. One is... I think people try to overcompensate. I mean, I was very shy as a child. Yeah. I think you overcompensate. So Celebrity Love Island is almost like the worst nightmare of a shy person, and yet you do it. But also, I don't know, my mother used to say to me something very horrible, which I thought was horrible when I was 15, which was, I don't know why you're shy. No one's interested you in, in you in the first place. <gasps> and no, but, uh, no, but listen, no, I know, but that... When I was 15, I minded, but actually it's very good because there is something is about good, shyness which is very thinking about you. Yes, yes, yes. And Worrying so all, about what people will think and of you. And nobody really cares yeah. and no except one, yourself. And no one cares except you. Yeah. yeah. So do you mean you feel you've conquered something in yourself Definitely. or just that you're easy with yourself? No, I think I, I, think I conquered uh, things. I think I sort of faced my biggest fears and uh, overcame them and actually just thought, you know what, it is what, what you said. No one really cares except yourself. And if you actually don't think that much of yourself, you think, oh, that person mustn't like me. And it doesn't matter. Nobody really cares. They sort of care about how they're dealing with it. And that's themselves. liberating. Yes, it's massively liberating. And, you know, and also because, you know, you know, I was on telly, I didn't think they were going to put out, you know, I, I was having the odd cigarette, Nigella. I don't know if you noticed that. And, mm. you know, the odd drink. And uh, I was <laughs> swearing a bit, which, you know, I didn't think they put any of that out. But now it's quite liberating because when I show up somewhere, I can just be me without having to go, <laughs> hello, yes, um, I would like a job, please. I go, yeah, all right, yeah, brilliant. And it's just like, it is quite liberating to be able to just be no, yourself. Listen, I absolutely agree with you because artifice is just too exhausting. <laughs> Jane Middlemiss and I are in the kitchen to make riddle tuna with lemon salsa. Do you cook much? I love cooking. Oh, I good. really love it. But I find, right, because um, I, I cook better when I'm cooking for people that I love. And it's that's when I cook really well. If I've got a boyfriend and I'm absolutely besotted with him, I make the most amazing food. And it's like <laughs> starters <laughs> and just get very, very fat and it's brilliant. But um, when it's just like by myself, it's sort of, I'm still cook, but I don't. It's not as good when you haven't got someone to cook for. Yeah, well, I think you're right, but I think cooking for yourself actually is the beginning, to, you know, the beginning of really to enjoy cooking and try yeah. things out. I mean, I think that is important. Mm. Actually, this is very, very easy. You could do this, you know, for yourself, and it wouldn't feel like, why am I bothering like this? It's tuna, which you marinate and griddle and then make with a lemon salsa, which is so simple. So mm. it makes something very, very straightforward seem kind of that bit special. Now, I always treat uh, tuna a bit as if it's meat, I like to marinate it. Oh. And I've got here some lemon, and I've got chili oil, you could wok oil, oh, garlic wow. oil, whatever you want. I like the colour of that, don't yeah, you? It's, it's lethal. And some salt, I'm, nice proper coarse salt, sea salt, and some dried mint, but only because I've got mint in the salsa, fresh mint. And I think it's quite important, you know, if you're using fresh mint, you tie in with a bit of dried mint, they're different tastes, but they kind of match. That's the theory. Okay, so I'm going to put the lemon juice cook in. I cook a lot of fish for myself. Very, very I, I, healthy. Yes, it's very, um, I, I do cook a lot. It's very easy to cook as well. I think a lot of people are quite scared of cooking fish. And it's actually, it doesn't take very long. And no, it's, but it's, it's quick. It's delicious, yeah. It's very quick. But I think people are, are scared of cooking full stop when they needn't be. And my theory, and I don't, I don't mean this as disrespect to chefs, because I love chefs who, in a restaurant, is that they see chefs and they think their cooking has got to be like that. Mm. I'm going to put the mint in. Whereas home cooking is home cooking. It shouldn't be like that. And it is just a question of, you know, doing something, put it on the, in a pan, take it out of a pan, and that's it. So just mix your marinade, not a lot, because you're not making it into a dressing, but just so it's a bit mixed. The thing with chefs as well, Nigella, right, is when they're at home, I bet they don't eat, like, really exquisitely. They just have, like, 
no. sausage and mash. Like I know. Well, I hope so. I wouldn't want anyone who had yeah, fancy really food at home. Annoying, wouldn't it? I'm going to put this on, OK, Jane, then we can get on with the salsa. Could leave it for a minute or so, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to get rid of this. Now, for the salsa, I've got... The main thing about the salsa is lemon. So I've got two lemons, and I use the whole of the lemon, not just the juice. Mm. I've got some red onion. I have to say mainly because I think it looks beautiful, because but it's a bit milder. And anyway, the acid from the lemons takes away that horrible kind of rasp of onion, so you don't get onion breath, if you're worrying. Um, some fresh mint. I mean, you could use coriander. You can use anything. I just think mint is a really fabulous and underused herb. And some parsley and a bit of olive oil. OK. Jane has spared herself doing some of this work with lemons because she's got a, a sore, sore finger. finger. Oh, poor one. Uh, I know, I jammed <laughs> it in the um, glove compartment of my car. Sweet. So I'm just going to show you, you can study. So I don't do it particularly well, but it works, which is you get a lemon, you take the top and bottom off so it sits, and then you just go all the way around. I'm not going to make it terribly neat because a bit of taking the pith off. I often do this for salads. So that, for example, I might make a green salad. Instead of making a dressing with vinegar and olive oil, I just chop up a lemon and mix it with some olive oil. There we are. My shards. And then, in a rather messy way... Watch your fingers, Nigella. Think, oh, don't, I've, I have more cuts and burns than you can see. They're kind of... They're, I'm proud of them. I wear them with pride. So I'm just chopping this fairly small. I'm going to keep all the pips and everything. I, I think that life is too short to be worrying about the odd pip. Um, so, are you ready for a bit of work? Yes. You seem like you've been sitting down too much. Uh -huh. Okay, if you would like now to add, please, the herbs and the onion. Yeah, just straight in. And while you're, yes, just straight in, just bung it in. Brilliant. And you could start, you could get a fork and start stirring. I am going to get the oh, tuna out in a minute, but I would like to take this plate from you, if yeah. I may. I'll move that. I'm going to put this here. You see, look, working. There's nothing more companionable, working actually. Is it you think it's cooking with someone? Yes, it's nice. I love that. OK, that last noise off. And here, I'm going to put this up here. And this is there. done. Are Perfect. You gonna, am I going to put that in as well? I'm going to put that in because I'm right. feeling now a bit redundant. <laughs> you just sit down and wait to Thank be fed. You. you don't have to do a thing. Lovely. What I might do is a bit of pepper. Do you cook every night, Nigella, at home? Most nights. If I'm not going out, I yeah. do. But that's only because I'm a greedy pig and I like having proper food. <laughs> I mean, you know, because my husband always says, can we just have, you know, a bit of cheese and toast? I say, you can have cheese and toast. I want supper. <laughs> right bit of oil. So in a way it's a bit like a cross between a um, salad and a relish. It's like a, a salish or a relad. Nice. This. That's what I put. Nice. So the tuna, I think, will carry on cooking. You can take it out and leave it for a few minutes. I mean, I like tuna a bit. Rare, rare idea. Yeah. But not, you know, completely cold unless it's sushi. And there you are, Jane. This is especially for you. Wow. So griddled tuna with lemon salsa. I taste it. I th well, I mean, I'm hoping so. This is the bit where you get to taste it. <gasps> I've never had any of your food before. I've just sort I of made it the in the first books. time of many. Just lovely. <laughs> Now, one thing I'm really passionate about is makeup, and I'm not embarrassed to admit it. I should be, but I'm not. So, before the series started, we asked the beauty editors of the top women's magazines for their pick of new summer cosmetics. So, we tried them all out in hard work, and some of our favourites are here. I'm really lovely things. They're sort of summer essentials, if such a thing could be said about makeup. <laughs> and I want to go through them. I think you don't need much makeup in summer. No. You definitely need. I think, a bronzing powder. Yes. And this is a really lovely one. It's um, a Becca. I've never heard of that, Mayor. It's an Australian make. Oh. And you, as you'd expect, the Australians are very good at that kind of outdoor fresh look. Um, so it's lots of nice shimmery things to put under. So is it kind of shimmery in a kind of contoury way or, or shimmery all over? We well, I do it all over. See, I do, for example, that... Because I will, you know, you have to be, you know, show your arms in summer. Mm -hmm. My arms are not lithe and long as they once were. Mm -hmm. So I go like this, and I feel that makes them look better and a bit thinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please, <laughs> come <laughs> in, <laughs> <laughs> So I 
thing, but you know, the thing is, is that there are all sorts. So we've got this one too, because that comes kind off of... really easy, doesn't it? It's nice. Yeah, though. it's really nice. It is nice. I like that stuff. But I like that all over your mirror. clothes, though, when you. Sounding like my own grandmother. Oh, <laughs> no, it doesn't get clothes. on my clothes. I've used it a lot. I've been playing with it. No, What's it's that like? beautiful. Brilliant. So this is like the high street version, Rimmel. If I can show you. It's got a rather sweet thing with the sun on it. Is that to demonstrate it is a bronzer? <laughs> yes. Mm. It does the same Very thing. Clever. I mean, you can have a bit of a powder. I mean, it's the same thing. So whereas that one is 25, that is 4.49. Oh, well, you know, and then you've got it lots of... It is a of... bargain. I mean, I think the only thing you have to make sure with your own skin tone, if I can be a bit boring, is that it blends in, because otherwise mm. you do look like you've just rolled in mm. a kind of Aztec clay. Because mm. Jane, indeed, is pretty bronze already. She is bronze. She could wear a darker one than me, because mm. I'm like... You're quite milky. Like, you were pale like you. Mm. And she's been, she's been in the sun lab been a bit too long. <laughs> um, <laughs> lip gloss, Ooh. if I may say, very, very important mm. in summer. So what I feel is, this is a lovely one, so beautiful, look. And look, I love this little detail here on the mm -hmm. top. <laughs> Chanel one. What I think is, I don't like wearing makeup in summer, but if then suddenly you want to show that you're going to go out for a meal, so put a bit of lip gloss on. Mm. Can I, would you mind if I fiddle with your mask? Can I do it? Come over here, this I'm going like, to try. Um, Oh. Carol Kaplan and no, Cherie Booth. That's it? right, oh, yes. You know how to wound a girl. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my Cherie Booth! You have to fight so this is, <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is really lovely. And even though it looks really bright, in fact, it's quite sheer. It's got a fabulous name. It's called Sorbet. Sorbet. What's it like? It's very nice. It doesn't look at all like it does in the tin, no, as it were. it's quite light. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Does it feel gloopy? The, but the th it no, it feel feels perfect. I mean, I think the thing is, I know Chanel makeup's expensive, but it's so much mm. cheaper than the dress. Stop doing don't, that. What you have to do, now, okay. what I'm testing is, make, yes, is uh, with lip gloss. You don't, mustn't stick to your hair, I know. <laughs> and it doesn't. A little but bit look. one strand. Yes, that, one okay. strand, that's but not too bad. So that one... Oh, you have hair that moves. That's... £13.50, that is. Which I know is expensive, but I think it makes you feel so... Fabulous when you buy that really lovely packaged makeup. Mm. I know maybe that I'm shallow and I don't care, but I just mm. think, mm, it feels like a lovely treat. You haven't been in a changing room. You haven't had to spend a lot of money on a skirt yeah. or something. I'd rather this... buy two bottles of wine, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you could get four Actually... bottles of wine for pain, Pam, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you see, I certainly wouldn't. I'd rather have that. So that just shows the difference. The north, south So this is more like the high street version. <laughs> this is a bourgeois one for 5 95 The thing about this is it's got, can you see, it's got like a brush mm -hmm. rather than... Not really. I'm not liking I'm a thin not, brush I'm for not lips. liking a thin brush for the lips. Well, you see, the thing is, since you don't need a lip gloss in the first place, there's no such thing as needing a lip gloss. You want the one that's going to give you yeah. enormous pleasure. And so... Are you eating that or were you putting it on? <laughs> She's drinking it instead of the bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of really nice and colour. I'm, I'm going to move along now to my next oh, yeah. product. OK, so I think for summer, you need a little multi-purpose something so that you know you can use it in many ways and it's not going to take up a little room in your makeup bag. That's the deal mm. for me. And this one I'm very keen on. This is a Laura Mercier. It's called a like Contrast Contour. Now... I know it looks very odd and it looks very small, but it's really, really brilliant. Can I show you? So, it's dark brown. It doesn't go on as dark as this, but what it does is it gives the optical illusion of, you know, the dark shades of things mm. recede. So if you want cheekbones, can I demonstrate? If you want cheekbones, you put it here. But Have you've I already got cheekbones. Yeah. You've got beautiful cheekbones. <sighs> no, but... They chorus. But I've yeah. got makeup on now but in summer yeah. it's just if you're going swimming and you haven't got makeup so you've just got your sunblock and i have factor 80 and really? then and i'm not joking and then i put this <laughs> underneath here for cheekbones and so that you can't see the bottles of wine you've had the night before and you've got open eyes i put some here that's really actually quite i think nice. if the bottle ever here... falls out of the cookery world <laughs> you've got a great future ahead of and you here can i just show my favorite yes. bit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll show you my favourite bit. Yeah. Lean forward, you cr give yourself some Audrey Hepburns by putting a bit oh, of thing in your clavicles. Posh spice as we know it now. Look yes. what you've done, though. Look what she's doing. <laughs> what am I doing? She can't see what she's you doing. You look you like a in. massive yeah. brown mark. You rub so it in. Everywhere. I can't rub it in. I've got a mirror. And in here as well. Only rub it like in a, for me. Like Thank a you. Child. But you see, and that one is that one is quite <laughs> expensive. That one was, let me see, 16.50. This is a high street one, 9.95 and we'll do exactly the same job, you see. Slightly lighter, but it is really great. So I think the thing is, 
Do the other clavicle, because we've only done one. <laughs> Jane, will you do it for me? Because I'm not quite sure where you're putting it. Which one, if you want? Okay, I go like this, and you just put it in the hollow bit inside. Oh, I see. And then you just blend it. you rub it in, blend in. And then you look all skinny. Okay, so mine would say, look, Let's have a good. Look. One clavicle skinnier than the other now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But I think that my feeling is... Dirty neck. <laughs> Don't be like that. So I think, in a way, you can have fun whether you buy the cheap one or the more expensive one. It just depends what kind of a treat you want to give yourself, because they all do basically the same thing. I'm very, very happy. I'm going to keep the most expensive ones, though. <laughs> I'm now going to make raspberry jam, and you may think you're not the sort of person to make jam, and I'm making this to make you change your mind. The good thing about it is that, well, I call it hands-free raspberry jam, by which I mean it's not on the stove, there's no stirring, there's no setting point, no thermometers. It's very, very straightforward. It's raspberry jam, so I have raspberries, and then I have sugar. With jam, you always have, I hate to say it, the same weight of sugar as you do raspberries, and that's how it goes. So the raspberries go in a one bowl. Sugar in another. These are oven-proof bowls. I know they don't look like they are, but they are. Believe me. And then these two go in a 180-degree oven for about 20 minutes. I'm just going to put these here now because I have, fortunately, some raspberries and sugar that have been in the oven. And then all you do, I'm just going to shut the oven door, is pour the two together. Now, you've got to be very careful. Because I'm thinking of your safety, I'm going to put these in a jug. Mess, don't worry about the spillage. It's better to spill on the surface than to pour hot sugar over you. Mm. This is a miracle, this jam. I'm going to do it this way, so see better. These go in, and the minute you st start stirring them together, it's rather weird, it turns in to a kind of gorgeous ruby-red river. I mean, look at that. Now, the thing is, it's not a jam in the sense of a preserve, so you can't keep it forever. It looks very, very runny now, and it is runnier than a normal jam, but it will set a bit. It just doesn't go really hard. So I wouldn't keep it for longer than a week, and you should really keep it in the fridge, although I don't like to. But having said that, I always find I can get through a jar of this when it's homemade in about a day. Very, very easily. Very, very useful jam funnel. And then pour into said jar. Oh, just enough. Need another one for the rest of that. There we are. And I have got one, because that is too hot. Oh, that would be very, very a burn making here. Lovely and cool. And now, mm, oh, it's so delicious. It's like, it's almost like boiled sweets made out of raspberries. So I'm going to put some on in the bread and butter. And that's it. My hands-free raspberry jam. Desperate to try this, of oh, course. It looks so gorgeous. That is a real It's the smell. I know it's a horrible thing to say on TV, but anyway, can I hand Thank you? I'll give you some to Jane first. Yes. Mm. Brunettes before blondes. <laughs> <laughs> that amazing. Isn't it? And it is, I mean, it is as easy as that. I mean, really. Am I, should I not say that? Not with oh, the burger. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll give I'll you some, Maria. I'll give that to yeah. Maria. I'm very big hearted like that. Mm. This is so delicious. And anything that gives you an excuse to have bread and butter can't be all bad. No, exactly. I'd are. love to be married to you, Nigella. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'd be> brilliant. <laughs> well, I'm going to take that as a very, very, very mm, fetching exactly. proposal. <laughs> so, <laughs> on that bombshell, I'm going to say thank you very much, Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>